Well, Yale was the first, one, one of the first uh, forestry schools. This is back in the 1800s, back in the 1870s, 1880s. Yale was one of the first forestry schools. It wasn't the first, but it was among them. And what did they learn at Yale? They, they learned all this stuff about forestry, how to manage their forests how to, for maximum profit. But they also learned, they read, did, read what was popular at the time, you know, the, the, the transcendentalists, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Uh, they picked up some Whitman, a little earlier than them, but still. All this stuff saying we are part of nature, nature is part of us, you know, uh, um, uh, there's so much stuff that you could understand about the relationships. And then, so here's this kid who's going to be in charge of this huge timber industry, this massive company, and yet he also has, feels an affinity for these trees that he can't deny. And so that becomes an issue. And that was an issue, and I took that directly from, that happened, that, 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 there's a lot of historical stuff in the book, it's not a historical <coughs> novel, but that era, 1890s into the 1900s, when Teddy Roosevelt was like starting the National Parks Movement, which by the way is something we should all be paying attention to because it's coming up to the 100th, 100th anniversary of the National Parks, and we can actually be doing away with the National Parks. They could be defunded soon. And I think the idea that Teddy Roosevelt said, we, the parks, you know, before the National Parks, that was, that's an American invention, you know. Before, before that, in the eras before that, the, what a park was, was some really, really rich dude in Germany had a few hundred or a few thousand acres, and it was his personal game reserve. And sometimes he would let you into it, if he liked you. That's not, that's, it's an American invention. We have to make sure that we keep our national parks. Because Teddy Roosevelt said, listen, we can't just destroy everything willy-nilly. We have to have a deliberate and considered plan. The plan, well, conservationism is not about no cutting of trees. It's about let's do it in an orderly fashion so we don't destroy unnecessarily our forests so they can't replenish themselves. That was the idea. And these guys were crazy. Teddy Roosevelt and Gifford Pinchot, who started the whole National Parks thing, these guys were really wealthy family. They came from really wealthy families. Gifford Pinchot's family, was famous for clear cutting the Adirondack Mountains. Now he made all his money, his, he, all his money that he inherited was from clear cutting trees. And Gifford Pinchot's father had a painting made of one of the mountains in the Adirondacks, barren. And he kept that with him and put it over every fireplace of every house that he moved to. He would put that over to remind himself. He said, no, we can't do this, we have to. And they spent the rest of their lives and the lives of their children took it up trying to rebuild the Adirondacks, trying to regrow things and do things in a different way. So all this stuff takes place in the book, in the back burbling story of this book, and yet what I wanted is that the idea of a larger scape, scope and an intimate scope. Uh, someone told me, someone said, oh, I like your book because it's epic yet intimate. That's what I was going for. <clears throat> the, the father and son story between Trevor and his father that's present day, or at least 1990, that's the present day of the book. That same conversation is had by Trevor's great, great, great grandfather and great grand uncle in 1890. 100 years apart, they're having the same conversation. And we're having the conversation now, too. We're having the same conversation that was had 100 years ago. So, uh, just, you know, idea we need to be, you know, we need to be thoughtful. We need to be. Uh, I, all of these sorts of things I've tried to put in the book, but ideally my goal is to write a story that's fun and you'll like and want to read and be compelling and be moving and go quickly and be paced properly and so forth. So you keep listening to it on your audiobook or you keep reading it on your e reader or whatever. So anyway, I should end here because I mean I'm happy to talk all night, but <laughs> and that's really cool. I, I went into the apartment over here in my <laughs> You guys know, I'm pretty sure there's a ghost here. I felt it. My wife would be like freaking out right now. She wouldn't even come in. She's very sensitive to this sort of thing. Like we go to a hotel and she's like, I, I can't go into that room. Hold on, I gotta like help, I gotta move this ghost on. It's, it's, not, it's not funny. We've been married for 23 years, it's not. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. So we're going to sign right in here, actually, if you already have your book. If you don't, you can go grab it and go sign it. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you.
right. Tell us what you just saw. I saw Garth Stein in his new book about the uh, Pacific Northwest. And where are we? We're at the Margaret Mitchell House in Midtown Atlanta at 10th and P Street. Thanks for joining us. Follow ABC Vision for all of the events going on in Atlanta. We're going to be busy all week. And there's a Margaret Mitchell quote there that says, I want to be famous in some way, a speaker, artist, writer, soldier, fighter, stateswoman, or anything nearly January 1915. Thank you.